The Kamchatka Peninsula, a Russian territory situated between the Pacific Ocean and the Sea of Okhotsk, hosts one of the most significant volcanic concentrations on the planet. This narrow and elongated strip of land, positioned north of Japan and west of Alaska, contains more than 130 volcanic structures, with approximately 30 of them classified as active. The region represents an extraordinary natural laboratory for the study of extreme geological phenomena, where the dynamics between oceanic and continental tectonic plates generate unique conditions for the formation of gigantic stratovolcanoes. Some of these volcanic colossi are among the largest in the northern hemisphere, having formed in geologically recent periods, some with only 5,000 to 10,000 years of existence. The geological history of this peninsula is intrinsically linked to the subduction process, where the Pacific Plate plunges beneath the Eurasian Plate. This continuous mechanism, which has been occurring for millions of years, is responsible for creating not only the volcanic mountains, but also the intense seismic activity characteristic of the area. Oceanic water trapped in the subducting plate is gradually released at depth, generating critical changes in temperature and pressure that feed magma chambers at higher levels. This process, comparable to the upward movement of a lava lamp, explains the exceptional abundance of active volcanoes along the entire length of the peninsula. The region is part of the so-called Pacific Ring of Fire, an arc of tectonic activity that encircles the ocean and concentrates most of the world's earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. On the 29th of July, 2025, at 23 hours and 23 minutes, coordinated universal time, corresponding to 11 hours and 23 minutes. Kamchatka local time on July 30th, an earthquake of magnitude 8.8 .8 on the moment magnitude scale violently shook the coastal region of the peninsula. This megaquake, with its epicenter located approximately 93 miles, 150 kilometers from the coast, triggered an unprecedented sequence of seismic and volcanic events that continue to the present moment. In the weeks and months following the main shock, three additional earthquakes of magnitude 7 were recorded, one of them being a foreshock of magnitude 7.4 that occurred on July 20th, nine days before the main event. The other two, with magnitude 7.8 and 7.4, manifested in September, demonstrating that the tectonic energy accumulated in the region has not yet been completely dissipated. The pattern of subsequent seismic activity has been extraordinarily intense and persistent. Approximately two dozen earthquakes of magnitude 6 or greater have been documented, accompanied by hundreds of magnitude 5 tremors. The sequence differs significantly from typical aftershock behavior, where activity tends to progressively diminish after the main shock. Instead, the data show an alarming continuity of significant seismic events, with multiple magnitude 5 earthquakes occurring after each magnitude 6.1 shock, a pattern that would normally indicate only two or three tremors of that intensity. Continuous monitoring through advanced seismographic networks has revealed that this activity shows no clear signs of diminishing suggesting that deep geological processes are still developing in the region. The comparison with the great Tohoku earthquake, which reached magnitude 9.1 on March 11, 2011 in Japan, offers a valuable perspective. That event, significantly more powerful in terms of seismic energy released, was followed by five magnitude 7 earthquakes, including aftershocks that occurred months after the main shock. The Japanese sequence also recorded approximately four dozen magnitude 6 earthquakes, a higher number than observed in Kamchatka to date. However, the crucial difference lies in volcanic behavior. While the Tohoku earthquake did not trigger significant volcanic activity, the Kamchatka megaquake provoked the dramatic awakening of multiple volcanoes that had remained dormant for decades, or even centuries. Kluchevskaya volcano, recognized as one of the largest active volcanic structures in the northern hemisphere, began an intense eruptive phase immediately after the July megaquake. Satellite monitoring data, specifically mid-infrared observations that detect thermal anomalies, reveal a dramatic increase in radiant energy emitted by the volcano. Before the earthquake, thermal activity had remained at minimal level since April or May. But after the magnitude 8.8 .8 seismic event, infrared radiation levels skyrocketed, approaching levels considered extreme before stabilizing at a still significantly elevated level. This pattern demonstrates an unequivocal connection between the tectonic event and the reactivation of Kluchevskaya's magmatic system, suggesting that pressure waves generated by the earthquake or fractures opened in the crust may have destabilized the magma chamber.
Beyond Kluchevskaya, other majestic volcanoes have awakened alarmingly. Kronotsky, a perfectly conical stratovolcano that represents the second or third largest volcanic structure on the peninsula, began eruptive activity on October 3rd, marking its entry into the current phase of geological unrest. Shevelish, known for its frequent and explosive eruptions, has significantly intensified its behavior. Karimsky volcano, another stratovolcano of considerable dimensions, has also begun showing signs of renewed activity. Perhaps the most notable case is Kizimen Volcano, which erupted for the first time in 600 years during early August, maintaining a practically continuous emission of lava since then. This set of five main volcanoes, curiously all beginning with the letter K in their names, represents a considerable potential threat, especially considering that some are colossal stratovolcanoes capable of catastrophic eruptions, the Kamchatka Volcano Response Team maintains an extremely agile monitoring system, updating the status of each volcano in near real time. An analysis of daily bulletins reveals a dramatic contrast between the period before and after the megaquake. During January 2025, there was moderate activity, but February remained almost completely silent, with March recording only one significant event on March 30th. April saw some activity from Bazimyani Volcano, while May and June remained relatively quiet, with only occasional eruptions from the ever-active Shivaluk and Kluchevskaya. However, after the earthquake on July 30th, the panorama transformed radically. August presented an explosion of activity, with multiple volcanoes displaying orange and red alerts practically every day. September maintained this elevated trend, and October continued recording new volcanoes entering activity, demonstrating that the regional volcanic awakening was not a temporary phenomenon, but rather a fundamental change in the geological state of the peninsula. History documents a profound connection between major earthquakes and the most devastating volcanic eruptions in human history. Mount Vesuvius, whose eruption in 79 of the Common Era reached a volcanic explosivity index of 5, was preceded by a significant earthquake 17 years earlier. Krakatoa, which produced the boom heard around the world in 1883 with an index of 6, experienced a major earthquake five years before its catastrophic detonation. Mount Pinatubo, also with an index of 6 in 1991, had a magnitude 7.7 .7 earthquake just one year before its massive eruption. Santa Maria, whose index 6 eruption in 1902 was one of the largest of the 20th century, suffered a magnitude 7.5 earthquake only six months before, preceded by three months of increasing seismic activity in the volcano itself. Even more impressive is the case of Santorini, whose colossal Index 7 eruption around 1600 before the Common Era virtually destroyed the entire Minoan civilization on the island. Archaeological investigations have found clear evidence of earthquake damage at some point prior to the catastrophic eruption. Huayna Putina volcano, with an index of 6 in 1600 of the Common Era, erupted just one year after a major earthquake in the region. This recurring pattern suggests that extreme tectonic stresses not only coexist with active volcanic systems, but can act as triggers for the most explosive eruptions. Pressure waves generated by megaquakes can compress already pressurized magma chambers, or fractures opened in the crust can create sudden pathways for magma to ascend, both mechanisms capable of triggering eruptions of cataclysmic proportions. The concept of a mountain to caldera transformation represents the most extreme scenario possible. Massive stratovolcanoes like Kluchevskaya or Kronotsky contain magma chambers of colossal dimensions in their depths. If an explosive eruption of sufficient magnitude were to occur, expelling more than 24 cubic miles, 100 cubic kilometers, of material equivalent to dry rock, the mountain structure would not be able to sustain its own weight and would collapse inward into the void left by the emptied magma chamber, creating a giant circular depression known as a caldera. An index 7 eruption, necessary to produce such a result, would launch a sufficient quantity of ash and aerosols into the stratosphere to partially block solar radiation, potentially triggering a volcanic winter with falling global temperatures, crop failures, and climatic disturbances that could persist for years. The Kamchatka Peninsula possesses multiple candidates capable of producing such an event including some relatively young volcanoes that formed with extraordinary speed, demonstrating the intensity of magmatic processes in the region. If you are fascinated by these colossal forces that shape our planet and wish to continue following developments about earthquakes, volcanoes, geophysical energies, and extraordinary natural phenomena, 
subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell so you don't miss upcoming content. The situation in Kamchatka represents one of the most significant geological events of recent years, and we will continue monitoring and reporting each important development as this crisis unfolds.